So the other day, I received a message from YouTube saying that my video was flagged. I received my first strike. And a couple of months ago, one of my videos was banned in the United States and other parts of the world. So with that being said, I just got to bounce back like a champ. And for those who are in the same situation, who are given this truth, and you're not judging anyone, you're not prejudging anyone, there's no prejudice at all, but you're just given the truth. And I just want to let you know that you got to keep your head up. Keep up the good work. The Most High will guide you. Don't give up. My name is Michael Israel. Thank you for tuning in with me. Today's show is going to be a deep one. You may want to go ahead and get you a cup of coffee, sit back, and relax. This is Trans Investigation Part 3 and a half. FTM. The tranny exposed the truth. They don't want you to know. Real TV. Silence is betrayal. If you know the truth and you don't say the truth, then the blood is on your hands. I'm not going to say too much in this show. I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it sweet. But first, I'm going to give you the spiritual, and I'm going to let them do the talking. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And Yahweh blessed them, and Elohim said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. You could read with me on this. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a what? Okay. Neither shall a put on a woman's for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy Yah. Thanks for filling in the blanks on that. Isaiah 28 and 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So you're like, Michael, why you keep reading this from that and you pulling this from that? Because in Psalms 119, 104, it clearly says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. When you bring it down, when you break it down, you understand. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. So when you hear this word, that's where your faith comes in. Okay, I like that. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 1. He that is wounded in the stones, or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter and you fill in the press. First Corinthians 14 and 33. For Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Revelation 12 and 9. This is what we really need to know. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast out into the earth. 
and his angels were cast out with them. They're still here, y'all. He said it was cast out to the earth. They're still here. All right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 11 through 12. And for this cause, Yah shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all may be damned who believeth not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Most High is going to do what? He shall send them a strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. With that being said, let's go. As a girl. I'm, I'm a dude. Ready to kick some? She's out. She, yeah. I can fly. <laughs> She's out. This is the Gay Manifesto by Michael Swift, first published in Gay Community News February 15th through the 21st in 1987. It is also reprinted in the congressional record. This is what it states. We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms, in your army bunkhouses, in your truck stops, in all your male clubs, in your house of Congress, whenever men are with men together, your sons shall become our minions and do our biddings. They will be recast into our image. All laws banning homosexual activity will be revoked. Instead, legislation shall be passed, which engenders love between men. All homosexuals stand together as brothers. We shall triumph only when we present a common face to the vicious heterosexual enemy. If you dare to cry faggot, it states, fairy queer at us, we will stab you in your cowardly hearts and defile your dead puny bodies. We will unmask the powerful homosexuals who masquerade as heterosexuals. You will be shocked and frightened when you find that your presidents and their sons, your industrialists, your senators, your mayors, your generals, your athletes, your film stars, your television personalities, your civic leaders, your priests, are not the safe, familiar heterosexual figures you assume them to be. We are everywhere. We have infiltrated your ranks. Be careful when you speak of homosexuals because we are always among you. We may be sitting across the desk from you. We may be sleeping in the same bed with you. All churches who condemn us will be closed. Our only gods are handsome young men. For us, too much is not enough. All males who insist on remaining stupidly heterosexual will be tried in homosexual courts of justice and will become invisible men. We shall rewrite history, history filled and debased with your heterosexual lies and distortions. We shall be victorious because we are filled with the ferocious bitterness of the oppressed who have been forced to play seemingly bit parts in your dumb heterosexual shows throughout the age. We too are capable of firing guns and manning the barricades of the ultimate revolution. 
tremble, hetero swine, when we appear before you without our masks. Have you heard or read this article before? Why not? In my previous shows, I initially started off with discussing the anatomy and physiology of the male and female body to get more of a basic understanding of what we're seeing in this video. This time, I'm not going to do that so much. I want you to use your own eyes and your own judgment to discover what I see. In the previous videos of the Transvestigation Part 1 and Part 2, the results were of the male to female transformer. In this particular show, I'm not going to talk about celebrities too much. I'm not going to talk about the female to male celebrities too much. But I'm going to give you a glimpse of some of the things that I talked about with these visuals here. So as you can see, a lot of these popular uh, icons, if you will, um, they look a little different. And to the average person, they may look a little normal. And that's okay. You just need to train your eye a little better so you can know what's what and so you can know who's who. All right. In the previous video, I discussed briefly that Sierra is a man. In the previous video, I discussed briefly that Serena and Venus are both men. Also went over the brief fact that Wendy Williams was also born a man. Very top heavy. But when you look at the waist to chest ratio is just something going on. I must warn you. So warning, some images may be graphic. I must warn you again. Warning, this video contains content that some may find disturbing. You can never have too many warnings, right? So let me give you one more warning, okay? Warning. The following content is controversial and might be disturbing for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. There will be nudity. So, as you can see here and in the upcoming photos, you'll notice that the female to male post-surgery can be done. This is the same individual, the before and after. These aren't celebrities. These are regular people from all around the world with very little money who can afford these procedures somehow. Um, as you can see also, not only are the breasts removed, but nipple graphing is also available where they can actually reduce the size of the nipple. There seems to be a scar on each individual after post-surgery. And you'll notice that they'll try to grow hair to cover this scar or tattoos around this scar. Um, body contouring is also available where they can redesign the shoulders redesign the back all right so as far as the breast removal 
uh, for the gender reassignment surgery, of course, like I mentioned, the nipple grafts are available. But my question is, can milk still come out? <laughs> you know, they say the average surgery ranges from between $3,500 to $11,000 with a $500 to about $2,000 down payment to secure a surgery date. Now, not only do you have these fees, right, but you have hidden fees, like you have to pay the anesthesiologist. So you have the anesthesiologist fee, then you have the facility fees, and then you have medical test fees. You also have uh, consultation fees. And then you have post-surgery fees, where when you're done, you have to buy medical compression vest, you have to buy medications, you have to buy paper tape, gauzes, uh, band-aids, you know what I mean, scar care equipment, and ointments, okay, not only that, but as far as the facility fees, fees, you have to basically stay there for like at least a week, after surgery. This picture is crazy. The before and after. It's insane. I mean, they look like two totally different people. But these surgeons are really artists. They can do body sculpting. Now, another thing that we have to remember is that all you have to be is at least 16 with full parental consent to get this surgery. Facts. And you can't shower six or seven days post-surgery. Facts. And when you shower, you better make sure you pat, pat dry. Facts. Because when you get the nipple grafting, you can't just take the towel and rub it. There's sutures inside of the nipple. Facts. You can't work out for at least a month. Facts. There's no hot tub for at least six months. Facts. Now, there's also a procedure that's called phalloplasty or phalloplasty. And basically, how this is done is where they take grafts from the skin, from the outer thigh, the forearm, or the back. And what they do with this skin, they take it and they sew it to the... Uh, some area down to the general areas down there, some type of nerve or artery, right? And they make like these little flaps. And these flaps have to stay down there for like a couple of months. And then basically like after nine months of with these flaps they put down there, um, then they add the phallus inside of the flap. It's, it's odd, it's different, I know. It's crazy, it's crazy. But these are the before and after pictures of the female to men. The females to men. They've been around us this entire time. It's not like this information is new. It's just that some people are finally waking up. We've had situations where in the cartoons, Bugs Bunny played a transgender. You know, Tom and Jerry played transgenders. Um, from Joanna Man to Tyler Perry playing Medea to um, Eddie Murphy playing the different roles in the clumps. Jim Carrey in the living color playing... Uh, was it Elmira or whatever? Just about every male transgender, I mean, every male celebrity has played um, a tranny. This is just a fact. You, I mean, I'm sure you can name an episode or so. Um, John Travolta, goodness. Uh, who else has dressed like a woman? Uh, LeBron James. Um... 
goodness, there's so many superstars, right? This has been going on since the beginning of time. People are just finally waking up and it's finally becoming a little bit more public now. It's becoming a little bit more acceptable now. The Egyptians were transformers. The Romans were transformers. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. There's also a um, a fraternal group under the Masonic hood um, called the OTO, which is one of the highest ranks. And when you finally get to the top of your rank, basically in this secret rite or this secret passage, right? is um, the last duty is to become a trans. This is in the OTO. This one really took my heart because, um, I mean, as you can see, all the, all the Transformers are completely different from the before and after pictures. And as you can see here, this lady is completely a lady in this picture, just a tomboy. Right? A little masculine features here. But still a lady. Now, I really want you to take a good look at these before photos. From a baby to a lady, long hair, you know, great smile. Even has a baby or a niece of her own, right? And then we got one last picture here of the before the transition. This one really got me because it reminds me of myself a little bit. I was shocked when I initially saw it. Like, man, this is crazy. This is crazy. My hair looks like that right now. I have a little baby fro. But this is this is the transition. It's absolutely artistry that, you know, this type of um how can I say? It's art. It it truly is art. The surgeons are, are artists. Probably some of the best artists in the world. Right? But you can see the waistline is still there. They can also move the belly button a little lower, but the, the waist was, you know, still there in that previous photo. But not knowing, you could easily say that this person would pass as a guy. This is the before and after picture of this young lady here. This is the before picture to the left, and you can clearly see the after picture to the right, right? But this one is probably on testosterone for maybe three years. And then it gets a little bit uh, interesting here. This person clearly looks like a man. Has the Adam's apple, hairy shoulders. I don't even grow hair on my shoulders. It's crazy, right? Looks like a football player. So, um, this is what's going on in the world. This is the before picture of the young lady here. And you can clearly see that this young lady is a transformer now. You can see the contouring of the chest, masculine arms, strong jawbone structure, masculine facial features. A young lady here, as you can see, the top left and right photos into the testosterone over the three 
to um, four year period. Notice the tattoos. This is a young lady here. But look, the transition is clear. This is not her brother. This is not her father. You can clearly see the chest contouring where the double incision was made. This is a woman. Look at the complete difference. This is just about a year on testosterone. Agora eu vou mostrar no manequim, é, dar algumas dicas para vocês. Ó, nosso lindo manequim. Tem gente que gosta de colocar ele para baixo, assim. Algumas pessoas colocam ele ainda mais para cá, assim. Eu gosto de colocar geralmente bem na frente, assim. E ou eu deixo assim, ou eu deixo assim, pro lado. Eu gosto assim. Nessa posição. I hate when people tell me I can't do something. Tell me that I can't. And I will do whatever it takes to prove you wrong. Personal trainer Tommy Morrell hopes his career in bodybuilding can inspire a new generation of trans men and women. I'm a real like, like hardcore gym rat. I'm in the gym seven days a week. I don't think that people should make a deal whether I'm trans or not. You know, at the end of the day, I look male, so what's the problem? Born Tamara Morrell, Tommy began transitioning in 2011 after battling with his appearance for years. I lived my life as a female for as long as I could. I was becoming more and more and more miserable every day. So do I try to live by this standard, this, this, this box that people want me in? Raised in a deeply religious household, Tommy was worried about how his parents would react when he told them he was trans. My dad's a pastor, so I'm a pastor's kid. And my mom also helps in the ministry of my dad. Telling them I was not just gay, but I was trans was like, I knew I was dropping a bombshell on them. And my dad was like, oh, you know, I know since you were four years old, you know, and like he had seen all the signs and stuff like that, but you know, he was in denial. My mom, would, she started crying and that really broke my heart. My parents did a couple things that I thought were really cool. They read books on how to reconcile their spiritual relationship with their higher power, so we get along great. At the beginning, I thought it was just a phase, and but then he came out saying that he was transgender. I, I think that takes a lot of strength. I admire my son. In addition to his bodybuilding commitments, Tommy has found new motivation in the form of Ava, his girlfriend. Like Tommy, Ava is also trans. Me and Ava do have like that spark, which was what I went for. She's awesome. How does it feel to have a bodybuilder boyfriend? When he's undressed, it's great. 
He is making me uh, communicate better and open up more because I've been very shut down. Um, I don't open up about my feelings and he's trying to pry it out of me. Tommy first began his bodybuilding career competing in trans competitions with great success. But last year he stepped up his game and entered into the toughest competition yet, the MPC Fort Lauderdale Men's Cup. Winning the MPC Fort Lauderdale, the third place. The, my proudest moment as a bodybuilder was being in that arena and with a bunch of like dudes and getting over my fear. I mean, winning the FTM overall competition was nice, but being at the disadvantage of winning was me, like that, that, was, that, that was more heartfelt. I had a big burger after that. It's not easy to be honest in this world, right? That's one of the things that I admire most of him, is the honesty of wanting to not live a lie. My main motivation is my family, for one. I definitely want to make my mom and my dad and my little brother and people around me, my family and my friends, I want to make them proud. I knew I was different, but I didn't know how. There was a lot of rumors being passed and a lot of whispering and a lot of pointing and laughing. It's kind of hard to explain. It's just I never felt like a female. Sean Stinson was the winner of our first competition. So it means a lot to me that uh, someone like Sean, who is a straight trans man, uh, to be able to come and, and, and say, hey, I am trans and here's my body. My definition of being transgender is being born in the wrong body. I was very depressed as a child, suicidal. It's not that I didn't want to express it, I didn't even know where to begin. I went into the military the same year I graduated, and when I left home, that was the most relief that I've ever had in my life. I had decided from that day forward, I'm gonna be myself. Over in Iraq, you're either gonna be a movie head, you're gonna sleep all day, or you're gonna work out. And I chose to work out. And my main focus was my chest. I'm like, you know what? If I went to the beach, I would be able to walk around without a shirt on. I was transitioning without really knowing I was transitioning. <laughs> we have people that have no surgery, uh, no top surgery, and they still show up and then take it all out. Everybody should go into this feeling like they're number one. Nothing less. Number one. I'd like to invite all uh, the men on stage at this time to line up for their mandatory poses. Step number two, Sean right. One thing that they definitely have in common, they own their identity. Is anything about you? I would say yes. That I was born in the right body. Ask me that same question today. Thing. Jasmine Marino and her boyfriend Ryan Saeed look like any other young couple, except both of them were born the opposite gender. I like the fact that Ryan's transgender too. When I'm going through like a rough time, he understands me. And while they're happy together now, growing up transgender was tough. My family, they didn't accept it at all. They gave me a really hard time. They said I was a disgrace to their family. And at one point, they took me to a lot of psychiatrists and therapists and thought I was sick in the head or something. 25-year-old Ryan was born a girl named Sarah. Growing up was like really hard. I didn't know who I was and I just knew something wasn't right in my family. My parents always used to force me to be girly or I uh, always were, was into boys' clothes. I thought it was a phase. When you're a teenager, you do go through phases. Eventually, his family came to accept him as Ryan rather than Sarah. Do you ever think of me as Sarah? I think just by name. I think it's just a habit. Right? Yeah, I think it's just a name thing, not uh, also, the physical Sarah. But at least you're trying. We knew something was wrong. We weren't quite sure, and I think when 
we found out once that he was dressed like a boy, we were a bit confused. With the support of his close friend Emilio, who's also transgender, Ryan was able to begin his transitioning process. I believe I've helped him for it quite a bit. Um, I introduced him into like the, hor the whole hormone therapy, uh, replacement therapy. Um, I talked to him about like surgeries and the things that he could do to change. We always talk about you know what's going on in our lives, how we feel about it, and if we're having a rough time, we talk to each other about it. Jasmine too knew from a young age that she was transgender. I always liked to play with Barbies, and girl stuff attracted me more. The boy stuff just didn't seem right. I've always known since I was like maybe in kindergarten. At age 16, I would hang out with this transgender girl, and I always wanted to be like her. I would talk to her about how she came out and everything like that. I remember one time I talked to my brother's wife and she told me that, was good, huh? that just be who I want to be and it was okay to not care what people say. Ryan and Jasmine found each other on Instagram and chatted on Skype for a month before deciding to meet. She messaged me first. <laughs> I wasn't into her because I thought she was like, you know, those legally blonde girls. <laughs> I'm like, you know, let me give it a try. Actually, I just kept talking to her and actually she was the most sweetest girl I've ever talked to. Honestly, I think it was love at first sight. I couldn't stop staring at her. But it's not just Ryan who's paying attention to Jasmine. A lot of guys, they messaged me, people from my old school too. And a lot of guys hit on me. When guys give her attention, I feel like she's beauty and I'm beast and it's like, <laughs> That's what I feel like people, that's how they see us, because she's beautiful. I try to make him feel more of a man. He's just like any other guy. I like making him happy. While Ryan has been living as a man for four years, Jasmine started transitioning just two years ago. I'm on testosterone. It's called the Letestro, and I have to take it every two weeks, and I get it injected. It took two months to grow my breasts. Not fully, but there was little buds. <laughs> I was really, really, really happy. Neither of them has undergone full gender reassignment surgery yet, but they want to get married and plan on having children using Jasmine's sperm and Ryan's eggs. At first, being intimate was kind of hard. It was different, but then we found our ways. We plan to get some surgeries first um, before we have kids. It comes down to where we can't have kids since our hormones like affect that, then we'd probably adopt. Whoever's going through what we're going through, I would tell them, you know, hold on, don't give up, talk to someone. There's at least one person out there that will understand where you're coming from. Never been more true for what we have in store for you in this video. Today you will meet 10 individuals who say that gender doesn't define who you are. 10 hot guys who were born female. Lauren Cameron. Lauren's journey to become male and a successful photographer crossed paths in 1993 as he began this career by capturing his own personal evolution. This soon developed into a photographic series of other transsexuals in his critically acclaimed book, Body Alchemy, Transsexual Portraits. He says his images help empower the transgendered and educate the non-transgendered. Thomas Beatty. Most probably remember Thomas as the world's first pregnant man. Thomas decided to start taking male hormones in his mid-twenties, but wanted to keep his female sex organs so that he and his wife, who was not able to conceive, could have a child. But they didn't want to stop at just one. They since have had three children together. Balian Buxbaum Yvonne Buxbaum was Germany's leading Olympic female pole vaulter in the early 2000s. Balian was forced to quit his athletic career because of the medical implications of hormone therapy, and in 2008, he underwent gender reassignment surgery to complete his transformation. Ian Harvey As a stand-up comedian, Ian often uses his experiences as a transsexual in his act, and has even been cast in a Golden Globe-winning Amazon TV series called Transparent. So, for those who doubted his decisions in the past, it is certainly Ian who is getting the last laugh. Rocco Coyotes Rocco is considered as the first openly transgender singer in hip-hop. In fact, he sees himself as a musical missionary of sorts. Music provides this transgender hip-hop artist a stage to help educate others about being transgender. Ryan Salins 
Ryan is an LGBT rights advocate and public speaker who talks about his journey of evolution from Kimberly to Ryan. For 15 years, he has enlightened others about issues that surrounded the medical and social world. After being featured on the Logo Network, he seized the opportunity to travel and share his story at the universities around the U.S., alongside publishing his book, Second Son. Lucas Silvera This Canadian is not only known as the lead singer of the rock band, The Clicks, but Lucas is also the first trans male to be signed by a major record label. But his resume doesn't stop there. He is also an actor, public speaker, TV show host, and painter. He strongly believes that if people want others to accept them, they need to be accepting of others. Aiden Dowling the successful YouTuber, fitness trainer, and entrepreneur, Aiden Dowling, has broken down a few stereotype barriers throughout his career, but one achievement in particular will shatter them. Aiden is in the running to be crowned the ultimate guy and be featured on the cover of Men's Health magazine. You can see Aiden's documented transition and quest for the cover on his YouTube channel. Ty Turner Born Lexi Turner, Ty Turner is another YouTuber who continues to document his transition from female to male. His open dialogue about being self-assured, dating as a transgender, and dealing with depression has helped others through their own transitional phases. Buck Angel As an award-winning adult film star, Buck Angel may seem like his road to becoming male was a smooth ride. As a teen, he suffered from severe depression and was threatened to be thrown in a mental institution for gender dysphoria. Today, he uses this as ammunition for educational lectures and films. Buck's famous phrase, it's not what's between your legs that defines you, is used as a source of inspiration for others. You can see Buck's story firsthand in Mr. Angel, a documentary featured on Netflix. Hey guys, I'm Navy Wavy, and obviously there's a lot of shirtlessness on my channel, but shirtlessness, interestingly enough, is one of those things that cisgender or non-trans guys tend to really take for granted. And the thing is, for a lot of trans guys, being shirtless is something that they have to work really hard to achieve. Now, having top surgery, which you are about to see, is not what makes a trans guy a man. And in fact, it's really expensive, but for a lot of trans guys, it's an important rite of passage. And this is a topic that a lot of us, myself included, know very little about. So I invited some of my friends over to share their experience. And while these guys agreed to answer my questions, it's really important to remember that it is totally not appropriate and really not cool to just go up to any trans person and ask them questions about their body. So anyway, without further ado, take a look. My name's Doug. I'm from Santa Monica, California. Uh, my name's Christina Salamanca, and I'm originally from Bogota, but I live in Culver City. I was quite large and it just never felt right on me. Like I always felt like it was somebody else's chest on me. I feel like there's this chest underneath the chest that I do have that people are never able to touch. This is me. There you are. You are a man that's taking his shirt off. There's yeah. nothing controversial about no. your, your binder off. Or... Alright, I'll do it now. I'm gonna take it out because it feels really uncomfortable to have like things like pop off or something. You do when you don't feel brave. Alright, what's up? You. This is me, and like, yeah, right. so I should do this. Well, coming up next on the Heat Index this morning, a stirring video that is being shared by millions. A couple's decision to allow their young child, born female, to become male. ABC's Mara Schiavacampo has more on their emotional journey. It's one child's story that has many people talking. Last week, California parents Jeff and Hillary Whittington posted a video to YouTube about their six-year-old transgender child, Ryland. A seven-minute clip that now has more than three million views and counting. The video explains how Ryland, who was born a girl, began insisting she was actually a boy as soon as she could speak. This is my sister, baby, and I just got it. The Whittingtons say after consulting with professionals like gender therapist Darlene Tando, they soon realized this was more than just a tomboy phase. With phases, they just kind of come and go. But with gender identity, when a child is transgender, typically nothing fades in or out. The family says they made the controversial decision to change their child's identity, referring to Ryland only as he, cutting his hair and sending a letter to family and friends about the change. There's huge benefits to doing this earlier in life. It's really just like they've been handed this gift that everyone around them all of a sudden starts seeing them for who they really are. The video has struck a chord. A People.com article drawing more than 1,500 comments in just three days. 
I commend these parents for doing what is right for their child, writes one. But one reader commenting, I would never do this to my child. Another adding, I find it disturbing. Last month, Ryland spoke about his transition at an event honoring the family. My name is Ryland Michael Lincoln. I'm a transgender kid. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my whole life. Thank you to my parents. The video ends with Ryland's words, but for so many, the conversation is just beginning. For Good Morning America, Mara Schiavocampo, ABC News, New York. Mm. And joining us now is ABC Chief Health and Medical Editor, Dr. Richard Besser. A lot of people have very strong feelings very about strong. this story. And the big question I think a lot of people are asking is, this child is just six, and right. you hear uh, him use the term transgender. Is it too young for a child to know or to be able to distinguish gender? Yeah. This story has gone viral. Vinny, 23 years of age, has already spent tens of thousands of dollars. Why? In hopes to transform into a genderless alien. And rather than try to explain this, we actually have Vinny join us in our audience. <laughs> and Vinny, I'm going to openly acknowledge when I read your story, I, I, there's some confusion. It's, a, it's, yeah. And your motivation, why you're doing this, and how far you've already gone and how far you wish to continue to go. Talk to us about your, your point in starting this and what your goal is. Uh, well, starting my journey to become kind of this um, genderless, sexless alien was brought about because um, in my communities, in the queer and gay community, in the trans community, I found myself not really connecting to either, more into a uh, gender non-binary. So you want to be sexless? Yeah, I looked into removing my genitals completely with um, different doctors, like a sexual on assignment. No nipples. I looked into removing my belly button just to give it kind of more that like that like sci-fi sexy kind of like look. Also because these are body modifications that aren't commonly done. They aren't commonly practiced and um, the more they're done obviously the better we get out of them. So but I want They're to not. Push. I'm happy to report that people have said no to you, right? Yeah, they scurry off and they get well, like a little th th This is different. It. You know, yeah. you go through gender assignment reassignment I mean, you know, removing your Adam's apple, feminizing your face, or making it more masculine, removing breasts, adding breasts, genitalia. And uncharted. trying to remove any genitalia at all, it's, it's such a, un this is different. You know, it really concerns me. When, let me tell you why that is. Number one, irreversible, right? Yes. Is there any part of you that thinks that maybe someday you would re regret it? Because.